So we hear the Lenara Connect in the high. So who are you? Hi, I'm Robin Randhava. I work for Arm at Cambridge in the UK. Uh, I'm responsible for system software architecture, uh, specifically the safety track. And, safety. Uh, safety. That's right. Um, I have my friends over here from System76. Hello. This is the hey. System76 laptop. System76 is cool, as far as I know, because they do uh, hardware that's built for Linux. <laughs> And uh, I got them here because everyone wants to see uh, ARM hardware and ARM software. And uh, we want to see ARM development happen on ARM machines. And, so, uh, yeah. what's the probability of that happening? Why don't I let System76 explain that? Yeah, sure. So, I'm the engineering manager at System76. My name is Jeremy Solar. I direct all the engineering activities. Um, we've been investigating ARM for quite some time, and we actually have an ARM device that we've already sold. Uh, we have the Starlink Pro, which is our ARM server, and we actually did an ARM netbook uh, a while ago called the Starlink. Uh, what we're looking for in ARM is a high-performance desktop class processor, something that could be utilized in a laptop or desktop. Uh, we're looking for a replacement for U-class and H-class Intel processors, and we think there are a lot of promising alternatives here. Uh, David's been doing investigative work on, on that front. So you have some yeah. leads? Uh, yeah, we've uh, been looking at several uh, uh, SOCs here, and um, we've also been discussing a lot of the challenges and things we would like to see uh, uh, from uh, SOC vendors and uh, various other people here at Lenaro in order to help uh, uh, OEMs like us be able to offer uh, fully supported uh, ARM uh, machines on Linux. So how, how com completely awesome would it be if this succeeds? If there's an amazing cool ARM laptop, then everybody in ARM is going to use one? Yeah, I think it's fair to say that you know a lot of uh, developers, specifically kernel developers, in, um, there's there's a better incentive for them to do development for ARM on ARM if you actually have a laptop, a laptop or a desktop workstation that's actually using ARM technology, right? I mean, you've you've heard all of the all of the commentary from Linus and others saying that you know like you guys need to up the game by providing ARM hardware that can be used for ARM development, and this is probably one way of doing it, right? So. So uh, it's, I think uh, the guys at Linaro are very much hoping this this project works. So what what kind of what would be the challenges in making that work? You need to make a PCB design. You need to test it like crazy to make sure it works and everything. And for us, making the PCB design is one of the easiest things because uh, most ARM CPUs provide a very obvious pinout and and specifications for mechanical placement of the CPU package. The issue for us on the Intel side, we can't even get that information without going through an NDA process and significant sales work to demonstrate that we can, we can meet certain order requirements. So for ARM CPUs, it's a lot easier to get the technical specifications, but what we need from, from vendors also is a guarantee that this hardware is going to be continuously supported through updated Linux kernels and through updated versions of Ubuntu uh, for many years. Um, currently, we've been seeing issues with the Thunder X processor, which is what we're offering on our on our ARM server. We're only able to deliver it with 1604 because the vendor has not been updating support. Uh, Cavium has not been updating support in newer kernel versions and making sure it continues to work without regressions. So I'm very excited by the latest trend uh, at the at the ARM marketing department a bit, where they they're talking about matching core i5, core i3, you know, like comparing that way. So that's going to be exciting when some chips come out with a, a76, you know, that are kind of super powerful and stuff like that. But uh, ma many of the ARM chips so far have been either for the smartphone or for a few coming from the server. But for laptops, we need something kind of in between, right? Yes, I agree. I think like the, uh, and Jeremy might know more than me over here, but fundamentally the trend has been even in the Intel space to actually aim at the desktop workstation, right? And then uh, there was a market that was created for more mobile desktops, which happened to be laptops. And in, for, in the beginning, there were people, the, the packages for desktop workstations were the ones that were being, uh, in a sense, fitted into this form factor, right? Uh, there's no reason why a similar trend couldn't happen with ARM, for example, right? I mean, I don't, I personally don't think there'll be a, a, a specific line of processors that are aiming for laptops, but I think there should be enough um, wherewithal to take something that's aiming for the enterprise market, perhaps. Uh, or the high-end mobile market in terms of processors and systems around it that can be repurposed um, much in the way Intel did for, for laptops. So without saying any uh, any secrets about the potential leads you might have, but 
maybe for example there are some uh, some processors that are kind of for networking or there are maybe not the Thunder X2 it's maybe too big for a laptop right but um, something else that could be out there and then adding with the, through the PCI and having graphics and everything? Yeah, so the latest Cortex-A processors, as you referenced, uh, you know, in the marketing blurbs, they've made it very clear that uh, they're in the same performance envelope as, uh, you know, incumbent Cortex, uh, sorry, Core i5 implementations from Intel. You can extrapolate the performance envelope, and I would say that in the next two to three years, there'll be options available which are even better for this class of market, right? So without you know trying to get any secrets or anything, and you can't be saying that on the behalf of ARM, but it'd be nice if ARM was able to provide the support to make sure this works, right? Yeah, that's why they're here at Linaro, right? Yeah. Because uh, I wanted to tap into this 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 really hot trend around ARM on ARM at this Connect and the Connect before this, and actually try and get these guys in so that they can share their insights because they do commercial grade, really classy laptops, not with ARM right now. But they can they have a whole uh, load of information they can share with us right well, well there's also a a very wide range of what constitutes a uh uh a laptop uh we sell everything on the intel side from like 25 watt tdp processors all the way up to about 95 watt uh processors like what you'd find in uh, the servo here what is this uh this is a system 76 servo uh this is a couple year old model um yeah. It uh, has a socketed desktop i7 uh, processor. Um, socketed. Socketed, yes. as in, like, this is actually literally a desktop like processor a desktop. and a laptop. Um, and it has, how thick is this? Oh, it's about, uh, about an inch, inch and a half thick total. Um, uh, you could totally fit a, uh, um, a Thunder X2 in there. Yes, maybe, yes, maybe yes. Not activate yes. All, all the cores, the right? The idea would be all exactly the cores. that. That uh, on our 13-inch Galago, we may have something similar to an extremely high-performance mobile processor like the Kirin that recently came out. But then moving up to to the works class, this class, we really need something in between the Thunder X2 and and the highest-end mobile processor. Um, this is a H-class Intel processor, and it also has Nvidia graphics. Can we open see the? You have so you have super nice keyboards and everything. Yeah, I have a I have a backlit keyboard. Um, so we can see the backlit there. How nice and is the keyboard? How do you engineer that? It's, it's a very nice keyboard. It comes from a company called Ciccone. And uh, we, we are able to choose keyboards um, and ask for design for changes. And, and how about the, the mouse? This, mouse is, this is Synaptics. So, so it's best in class? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's standard on most laptops. And the uh, displays are good? Yeah, of course. So you get uh, any matte, like people like matte, right? Or what do you kind of displays you do glossy too? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Our 13-inch Galago has a, a glossy high DPI display. We also offer a 4K display on this model, and on the Serval and Bonobo as well, which are larger models. Um, we have a a number of different options. You can go visit our website, system76.com, to see them all. But what we're really looking for from ARM. Uh, we could, we absolutely could have a Cavian Thunder X in yeah. this we class. Need, are you, is that like for sure? Isn't for it sure. too hot? Because I don't uh, think it's the, too the hot. Thunder I, X needs it looks like it has a big uh, what do you call it cooling system over we there. Put eight, we put i7 8086s in this. This we, we put five gigahertz uh, Intel processors in there. Yeah. Uh, with six cores. Yeah. Um, and eight eight cores actually with the next platform jump. Yeah. We'll have the 9900 K. Uh, which has a uh, soldered uh, internal heatsink and can go up to five gigahertz boost and has eight cores, sixteen threads. Can you open so it up? These uh, are sure. So is it the same class of uh, keyboard, different one? S same class. This keyboard. is actually a. a uh, well, well, it's a slightly different keyboard. Um, yeah, because but this it's supports in key similar. rollover. Yeah. This one supports in key rollover. It also has the ability to change colors and it has three different zones. Um, so it's an RGB keyboard. Uh, the color stuff is for gamers, no? Or what? Oh yeah, for gamers, oh, for sure. Oh, I mean, hackers you can just, like it too. I leave it off because yeah. it uses power, obviously, to yeah. to run your backlight. But yeah, you can you can set it to full RGB. The the um, I don't know if I would give a demo of that right now. I probably could. Um, you can have some apps do some interesting notifications yeah. and with the colors and stuff, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. How about the um, could you, could you, uh, what's your, what's your, uh, what's called uh, uh, impression of these guys? What, what are they really good at? They're really good at, they're making, 
Are they making the coolest Linux laptops in the world or? So I'll give you my honest opinion. I, I always assume that anybody who's trying to design uh, hardware uh, for Linux would actually have a fairly uh, kind of not very polished product. But look at this, right? I mean, this is pretty good stuff. So, and the reason it's pretty good is because these guys know what they're doing. Uh, I've had a chat with these guys about uh, certain bits of the, the technology they use for doing firmware, maintenance, image builds, deployments. And they seem to have put in a lot of thought around security, deployment securely, those kind of things. So they know what they're talking about. And he's also the creator of the Redox microkernel written in Rust, so he really mm -hmm. does care about security. What is that? Right, so we're going to have a talk about this tomorrow, but uh, do you want to do this? Yeah, Redox is a microkernel operating system written primarily in Rust, which is a new language designed around security. It is designed to be in t extremely reliable while still supporting POSIX applications. So well, where would that run in this kind of hardware? What is it for? Uh, it can run as a desktop on, on something like this. Uh, I can boot it up pretty easily. Um, I was just there. I keep closing oh, the lid, it. so <laughs> I have to log in every time. So. Um, how much of the hardware here is completely open or, you know, uh, sometimes, for example, as far as I heard, for example, Intel has uh, some kind of, I don't know if it's called backdoors or something, you know, like uh, people don't want to have this. They want to have full control of their everything. Yeah, so uh, there was um, a lot of talk uh, in the past year about uh, uh, the Intel management engine and uh, the security vulnerabilities that were found in it. Um, so for quite a long time, we, we didn't do anything with the Intel ME, but uh, once the vulnerabilities were uh, being disclosed, uh, very quickly we um, f finished with our new firmware update infrastructure uh, that we'd already been working on for uh, some time and deployed firmware updates for all of our laptops to disable the Intel ME by default. Nearly two dozen models. So mm. two dozen models for the past, uh, I think, four years, received firmware updates that disabled the Intel ME. And we did this using an open source firmware update infrastructure. Uh, we are developing more open hardware components and we'll be releasing those very soon. Uh, it'll be a huge release. This is one of those components. This is a backplane. It contains an AVR microprocessor that is the embedded controller. The firmware for that is completely open source. It contains a completely open source hardware design for the backplane. Uh, it also has fan control and power button control. Uh, I'll flip it around and you can see the SATA ports. And we're also doing a model that is, uh, let's see if I can pull that up. Yeah, give me about one second. Any of this is secret? No? No, it's huh? not a secret at all. Okay. Uh, we are gonna be releasing this very soon. This is SAS. So we can do U.2 as well. This was a bitch to route, by the way. <laughs> but uh, once routed, uh, we're going to have this in our, in our highest class product. We'll have U.2 supporting extremely high throughput. So and SAS is a specific kind of storage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that yep. people have in laptops, so nobody has that in laptops. This is not in laptops. But no. you'll be the this first one. This is for our desktop design. Ah, desktop, yeah. yeah we're, we're beginning uh, our hardware efforts with uh, desktops since a lot of, there's a lot hardware. of overlap in terms of uh, what you need on a desktop, you also need to be able to do on a laptop, but like uh, there's additional um, things on a laptop that uh, it's qu it's easier to uh, learn how to do this all on the desktop mm -hmm. and release all that in open hardware in the meantime, and then apply all of that uh, with a few other things to building laptops uh, down the road. Right. For laptop design, what we have going on is we have an embed controller framework that we've developed that we're using on the desktop boards that you've just seen. That framework allows for battery control. It allows for control of backlights, keyboards, uh, and all the peripherals that are common on a laptop. So what that will allow us to do is to, is to embed that design onto a motherboard with whatever CPU we end up deciding to use and then um, basically get uh, a modular laptop going where you have a chassis controller that controls the laptop functions such as the power button and keyboard and touchpad and battery and you have a separate module that controls computing functions and they communicate over actually USB-C. By doing it in this, in this method uh, you can swap out either of those components. You can move your computing component to a different laptop, or you can, you, can, uh, you can replace your computing component very easily with the same laptop chassis. Is there any chance that 
the ARM ecosystem is sec more secure than these bugs and stuff that Intel has had with those backdoors and all that stuff, or um, and also, let's say if they choose an ARM processor that doesn't have graphics, then all these ARM they can always do the, some kind of PCI kind of graphics that could fit in a laptop. Yeah. So to your first question, I think uh, it's it's very hard to in a quantifiable way say whether one architecture uh, is, is more secure than another. <laughs> I think what's happened is in light of recent events in this space, in the security space, all architecture designers are going back to the drawing board in a sense yeah. and exploring ways of making their architecture more robust, more secure. And ARM is going to be at the top of the pack, right? Just like the others. To your second question. Um, yeah, the having a, like an open source uh, option for GPUs is is an interesting question in the ARM space because of all of the legal wrangles associated with the IP around GPUs. But I like what the System76 are thinking of, which is like, you know what, um, they understand GPUs very well. They're already using NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, they understand busing protocols and architectures like USB-C, PCI Express very well. I see no reason why they could uh, basically compose a desktop workstation or a laptop design where they use PCI Express and whatever well understood GPU architecture that they're comfortable using with that, right? Yeah. Right. Be because when you when you specialize in safety, that means uh, that's that's a big topic for you then, the whole safety. Yeah, so... so that could be in these kind of devices too? Uh, it could, although the focus for me is actually in so-called safety critical domains and those are more closely associated with things like uh, automotives and robotics and healthcare and those kind of things, right? I, I would say uh, w one very important part of security for us um, and security for users is being able to get security updates, being able to get uh, the latest version of an operating system continuously through the life that the system will actually be used for. Um, so for us, that means that you know the SOC that we choose would have to have long-term support so that it works with every version of the Linux kernel from the time we start selling it through the time that the hardware dies. Um, want to look you want to, you want to get oh, a yeah. picture of these? Oh, they're using right System here. 76 in the wild. Is that yours? Yeah. Just How do you like this Monday? What do you think about it? I I really like this. It's um it's got everything. I really like all the ports in here. Yeah. What do you have kind of ports right here? You have a you have a real port, a USB three. And here on the other side, I have. You both have both a headphone and a and a, a microphone jack. Yep. Another USB three, and you both have DisplayPort and HDMI. Yep. So you have you can choose. Type C was maybe USB 3 speed, maybe, mm -hmm. and uh, gigabit Ethernet, yep. and SD. Oh my God! Yeah. Most people <laughs> don't have that. Why? I don't know. But so, <laughs> so, so um, do you have many, many customers? Who are your customers? Are they people that just like Linux and they're like uh, hobbyists, or oh, they're like serious people? A large number of our customers are serious people. So a majority of our customers are businesses that need to buy large amounts of Linux laptops for developers and, and entire teams. Then we have maybe 40% of our customers being individuals or people who order through our site outside of our sales channel um, and aren't, aren't gathered into that kind of enterprise business um, uh, group. And those are people who um, are passionate about Linux and want something that works out of the box. So it could be, uh, I'm not gonna say like CIA, but some kind of, you know, like, uh, you know, Yep. Top security firms. We kind have of government. Things? We have government uh, customers. We have universities, businesses, uh, all using uh, Linux because they want to be able to know what's happening in their laptops. They they want some assurance that they'll get support around Linux. Whereas if you buy like a, a ThinkPad, such as many of the uh, the ARM people have, <laughs> you you don't get support from Lenovo based on or from IBM based on that ThinkPad's. Uh, they, su operating system. they support the Windows yeah. right. mainly, right? Right. Yeah. Um, whereas we provide, you know, a, a lot of effort into first making sure that it works correctly out of the box with Linux, and uh, then providing technical support for for both, you know, uh, when, whether you have problems and and whatnot. Uh, um, we'll get you going. We'll help you figure things out. And if uh, you know customers do report problems to our technical support side, 
uh, we on the engineering side, you know, uh, hear about it very quickly and uh, address any issues that uh, do come up. So you have customers at Lenaro, at, uh, at Red Hat, at Suzy, all sure. these places, yep. yeah. and they, they kind of uh, help you, or do you have many flavors of Linux? Yeah. Uh, so we, we uh, for, the, for over a decade, um, exclusively offered uh, Ubuntu on our systems. Uh, today we offer both Ubuntu as well as uh, our own uh, Ubuntu-based uh, distribution yeah. called Pop! OS. But we provide support for many other Linux distributions. So we, we sell laptops with Ubuntu or with our Ubuntu derivative Pop! OS, but we support the laptops after they've gone to the customer on many different distributions. And there are, there are maintainers for, for the code that we write for supporting our laptops for Arch, for Fedora, things like that. So it's easy to get the, the driver support. But when you mention support, support is a big deal. Uh, they, it's not easy to do support, and you have a feeling that these guys are able to do all the support? Of course. They've been doing it for a long time. And they ship to 60 countries, I think. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like you can't uh, run an operation at that scale unless you actually thought through the ramifications for support and engineering, right? So, which they clearly have. So, how many people in the company? Uh, we have 24 people now. We just hired a few more people. And we're scaling up operations because we're, we're moving manufacturing to our location in Denver, Colorado. And that, that operation is going to start manufacturing desktop chassis and assembling desktops, which presently our desktop chassis come from China. So what does it change to do it locally in Denver? It changes, uh, we have complete control over the design and how it's made and we're able to actually reduce our costs by using more automation and increase our quality by having automated uh, mechanisms for, for ensuring quality. So uh, how old is the company now? The company was started in 2006, I believe. So, uh, but there's a potential that things could explode and you could be a They've the been next exploding, Dell? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not sure that we'll ever get to that point unless Windows dies a horrible death. Uh, I Which think could happen. It, it could happen, but uh, that's our major struggle and continues to be the struggle of Linux and that's to really conquer the desktop and to, to figure out why people keep moving to Windows even though they have ads in the start menu.